Hello. How are you, sweetheart? I am so good. It's just great to be with you, Carolyn. Mirabai, I am so excited about your class. Thank I you. really am. Not just because the subject matter of the dark night of the soul is, for me, one of the richest fields in mystical literature, but because I believe the dark night is occurring in epidemic proportions in our everyday life. And um, I thought that a class explaining the journey in um, contemporary language, sharing that um, what John of the Cross identified so incredibly is something we are now experiencing adjusted to who we are today. What, what do you think? Yes, exactly. That's, you know, it seems to be this kind of blueprint for the soul's journey across cultures, across mm -hmm. time periods. But something about this time in particular, the confluence of energies and circumstances is resonating both on an individual level and a, a kind of global or collective level. I mean, it's, e it's easier in a way to identify the features of the dark night of the soul as a personal spiritual crisis, masquerading sometimes, often, <laughs> as, a, as a psychological mm -hmm. um, condition. But it's just impossible anymore to not notice how this dark night experience, this classic blueprint, is manifesting across the landscape of the human family. It's extraordinary to me, you know, being so intimate with this teaching and seeing it now cropping up in the lives of almost everyone I know and in in the culture or the various. Well, you know, I always, as I said in a video I, I did yesterday, I hear so many people say, I'm, in, I'm going through a dark night. I'm, and they use the expression. Right. Not knowing that it came from a Carmelite priest 500 years ago. They have no idea that they are referring to a mystical journey. They think it is a suffering. but And that's when I thought that really, how did that seep into their vocabulary? Mm -hmm. Why are they calling it a dark night? And maybe some part of their soul is screaming, you are in a dark night. Yes, exactly. Like. If you knew what this beautiful mystical masterpiece was offering, you would be able to take refuge in it instead of feeling like you're individually just being battered, you know, or that you don't have what it takes to show up for these times or to show up for your own life. That that knowing that there is this beautiful map, which is really about, you know, for John of the Cross, it was all a metaphor for another metaphor, a bigger metaphor of this secret rendezvous between lover and beloved in the garden. Mm. And that, that is what's really happening here if you can say yes to it. But of course, we're, we're conditioned to say no to what feels like um, suffering, what feels like pain, what feels like we're doing something wrong. And, and John does a beautiful job in the dark night of the soul in, in showing us that we're not doing anything wrong, that the dark night is not evidence of screwing it all up and being abandoned and forsaken by God, but rather evidence that we are strong enough. We're being weaned, he says, from the divine breast. And it's, it's evidence of maturity on the spiritual path that we can, with all those um, kind of artificial props being taken away, we can have a direct experience which is actually an ecstatic experience because you know the mystical path is always about paradox it's well i think you know, when when we get through all the words that we use for that and actually put it into everyday experiences i would never have said this years ago but today i actually think what it comes down to is that because I'm so convinced that we are the agents of co-creation yeah. and that that's what this time is about. Maybe these next hundred years or mm -hmm. so, we've got to get that we 
are the agents of what's happening on the outside of us. It's not coming at us. We're coming at it. Hmm. We're the ones that are, and that the, we are also the agents in so many ways of our own suffering, Mm -hmm. of our own suffering. And that the dark night is the gift of the dark night is that you're shown how you're the agent of your own suffering. Mm -hmm. That, that, that is what that, that, and I've, I've watched this with that this is the difference between the love of power and the power of love mm-hmm. that so long as someone lives focused on believing that everyone else has their power that that somehow life has disempowered them mm-hmm. their i think their capacity to get out of the suffering of depression the suffering and anxiety is they have a bar they can get up to and that's as mm-hmm. far as they go. That what the dark night is about, and and this is why I love your work so much, you have such a rich take on it, is that the dark night is really about this message that however one sees God and the journey of life, life is not about suffering, it is about love. Mm. and the power of love. But if you have that view that life owes you instead of us owing life, Mm -hmm. that is what this journey is about. You have to change the rules, and that's when you realize that God is a companion Mm. instead of a theory. Yeah, that's so beautiful, Carolyn. And it's so aligned with um, my ancestral tradition of Judaism, which is so much about co-creating with God the world that we want to walk through, the world that we want to to offer, you know, and, and that we are that in some ways the world is this shattered vessel, is the Jewish mystical teaching. And our task is to is to restore it to wholeness with every act of loving kindness that we can that we can um, engage in, even in our thoughts. It says, even our thoughts mend the the broken vessel of of the world. And and so I love that you're talking about this co-creative relationship with the divine. And now in this time that we're in, when so many structures are falling down, are collapsing, and so many of us are feeling like, wow, it's our turn. We have to step up and co-create the world that we want to live in, the world that we want to leave behind. As you say, it could take a hundred years. Um, that that there, there is very much a, um, a call right now to be active agents. And if we feel disempowered and like God or other people are doing this to us, the government, the, you know, whoever we decide, then there's no way that we're going to be creative, um, impassioned, uh, brave agents of, of right. creation. Right. Well, I'm thrilled that you're doing this class on the dark night of the soul. I can't, I think that as you describe the journey to people in the, the stages of the journey, um, I, I cannot help but think people will identify this is what I'm going through in my life and how do I navigate this and how do I understand these passages? And I know that because I know you've been through a deep dark night with the loss of your daughter. I know that you know this passage, you know it in Spanish, you know it in English, you know it better than anybody that I know. So if anybody, could help someone understand the dark night. And I also think your writings on John of the Cross are positively exquisite. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I, I've said it before. I've said it when you're not around. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't be, you know, I do. I, I think people would be very blessed to hit, 
experienced you as a teacher. So thank you. Thank you. You know, the thing, the truth is I'm a translator, right? I translated this text from Spanish to English, but what I hope to offer in this course is to translate the English translation into your life, you know, your lives, our lives together. So there's, there's a way in which that is my greatest aspiration. And, and what I'm so excited about is, is being able to translate this to us now. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm taking your course. <laughs> That's uh, I'm taking, and I think it's, I can't wait. So, gracias. Gracias a ti, mi hermana. And thank you all. I hope to see you um, in this, this landscape of the luminous, radiant darkness soon. Thank you, dear. Till next week. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.